Founding the Technology Investment Network in 1999 gave Greg Shanahan valuable insight into how other Kiwi high-tech companies dealt with opportunity and obstacles. In the latest of MBR's Entrepreneur Series, he spoke to MBR's Nathan Smith and described how all those lessons helped set his own medical technology company Verify on the right track from day one. So I suppose, Greg, the best place to start is with your new venture, Verify. Yes. Um, how did it come into being and what does it do? Um, so Verify uh, is a, a solution to verify intravenous drugs using lasers to prevent medication error in hospitals. Which is a big problem, I imagine. It is a big problem. So to put that in the US con- context, one person dies every hour in US hospitals from medication error and 47 are injured at a cost of about 5 billion US per annum. Goodness me. So what have you done to, to solve that? So at the high risk end of medication error are intravenous drugs um, that uh, account for the majority of critical injuries or deaths. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, once the drug is in an IV bag or a syringe, they're all clear solutions are difficult to tell apart. So we have an analyzer that passes lasers uh, through the drug to uh, verify the drug identity and concentration. Well, it sounds very similar um, to a lot of other high-tech stuff coming out of New Zealand, which yep. you will know a lot about having founded yes. the Technology Investment Network's 10100 r- report. Um, it's such a good place to shift to because I suppose you would have seen a lot of experience coming through watching these high-tech companies out of New mm. Zealand. So um, why did you uh, found the TIN and what have you learnt from doing that? Um, I guess I founded TIN to essentially curate a community for technology exporters. Um, And at that time, I had recently returned to New Zealand and there didn't seem to be much uh, cohesion. Um, So uh, founded TIN as a networking organisation, then started the report in 2015. Mm -hmm. And the goal of that was um, twofold, to quantify the sectors so people understood it was big. And the second one was to uh, describe what success looked like on the basis that a lot of the way that we approach markets and products are unique uh, in New Zealand and wanted to try and bottle that and present it to the rest of the country as as a a learning for other companies. Do you think that's been successful? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, Obviously, the sector hasn't grown because of tin. Um, Our goal was to make what was going on transparent. Um, So we're not trying to be a think tank. We're just trying to reflect the best of what's happening. And so in the absence of other ideas, maybe try this. And to give an example, when we first started the TIN report, uh, I sent surveys to about 70 companies in 2015. This year we sent surveys to just under 1,000. It certainly moved on. Mm. Um, But you would have seen a lot of, of things coming through in your startup life now. Yeah. Uh, what mistakes have they made that you've avoided? Oh, I think I've made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> um, I think the, the, the every entrepreneur probably underestimates the task mm. in front of them. Um, a lot of ventures fail uh, primarily because of people. I think with the right people, you can do anything. Um, but I think the environment in New Zealand now is one of confidence. So people are going after large addressable markets with novel solutions, um, increasingly in deep tech, deep um, IP, um, and addressing those primarily with solutions that provide recurring revenue. Uh, So that's being applied to larger and larger opportunities, um, and as a result, it's getting more and more funding, particularly uh, from outside of New Zealand. So I wonder, I want to pick your brain on the idea that if you produce hardware, I suppose you're yep. limited by how much the factories can produce. Yep. But with the online world, you're effectively limited by your imagination. Yep. Anybody with internet connection can use your service. Yep. Do you think it's easier to be an entrepreneur in the, in the startup world, in the high-tech sector? Certainly easier than, than it was, and certainly easier in software as opposed to hardware or deep mm. tech, because... With deep tech, you've got a technology risk. The technology will either work or not. Um, Whereas in software, it's primarily a commercial risk. So with software and massive growth, as as everybody knows, in in software exports in New Zealand, you've uh, addressed some issues of um, distribution and scale, particularly through um, software as a service. So it's easy now to distribute a, a solution across the globe 
um, earning recurring revenue on a monthly basis, overcoming any financial uh, resistance to uh, customer acquisition. Um, and stay close to the company by uh, add, or customer by adding additional services and benefits. I also understand that Paul Callahan was a major inspiration for you coming through. Um, how so? I guess he was one of the early champions of TIN. And, you know, like a lot of these things, we found people talking about us. We were just producing, I was just producing a report and, remark, and remarking on uh, his vision for New Zealand. Um, his goals, I guess, are, are kind of similar to mine, and, that he's, or, and to most people in the sector. He saw technology as transformational for New Zealand. And one of uh, my f- uh, favourite Paul Callahan phrases was, "Imagine uh, how good, it, uh, you know, what will happen when everyone realises that we're good at this stuff." Mm. Um, so I think for technology, with the growth of technology, we've got a once in a generational. Uh, opportunity to address entrenched inequalities in New Zealand. Um, And we're a small, cohesive society. And so, in fact, all the things that we thought were disadvantages from being in New Zealand are, in fact, Mm -hmm. reversed and are, in fact, advantages for the country and make us more competitive. Interesting. So what now motivates you as an entrepreneur? Is it success? Is it some sort of New Zealand ink? What is it? Oh, totally. Totally, totally success, uh, desire to build, you know, a a, a company that makes an impact, um, both for, obviously, for our shareholders and and, and staff, um, but also just for the sense of building something that's positive. So the advantage that we have for Verify is that our solution saves lives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got to save one life every hour, you know, it's a pretty transformational experience for all our team. I imagine a lot of companies can't sort of say that they're delivering gummy bears or sort of sofas. but, but Yeah, no. yeah. Oh, exactly. So you get out of bed in the morning and this is the net outcome and you're working with real, really cool technology and you think, wow, our company could very be very big in this space. So we've got this opportunity to totally disrupt um, medication um, delivery to the patient in a very novel way that provides a level of safety that no one has provided before. So it's a a big opportunity and uh, we want to raise a lot of money and execute well to deliver on it. So do you get in front of young entrepreneurs coming through and if you do, what do you you tell them? To go for it, basically. I, I think that, you know, the people coming out of universities these days, and we employ a lot of people from Auckland University, incredibly impressive. I, I wouldn't want to be competing with them. So I I'm, I feel lucky that I'm their boss and I'm not applying for a job. And we compare how to other entrepreneurs in other countries, especially our, our nearest neighbour across the Tasman. Yeah, I, I, so one of the things that we're seeing on on the tinned perspective is that companies are going into the United States much earlier than they used to. Right. Previously, the journey used to be through Australia and people would will build confidence from the Austral- Australasian scale and then move into the US. For younger people and younger companies now, it's why shouldn't we go straight to the States? And so there's a lot more confidence and, and se- business savvy about how to approach it, say, for people of my age. Well, I suppose all the people on the TIN 100 have set those rails down, you know, prior to these people coming through. So I suppose they've got a lot of people to thank, like Paul Callahan and yourself. Yeah, and, well, particularly the people who've really made great success uh, in New Zealand. So some of the successes like Datacom or Fisher & Paykel, uh, Healthcare or uh, Zero, those kind of companies have led the way and, and pioneered models for others to emulate, and particularly the way they treat people. So in the quiet nights when you've, when you've got nothing to do and you're just staring into your own thoughts, yeah. if you could start again in your entrepreneur your background, what would you do differently? I'd probably start younger. Interesting. Um, I probably would have had the confidence to start younger because other people uh, were doing it. Mm. Um, I would have painted a larger picture and raised a whole lot more money sooner, um, which is, is, is happening now. Um, I think that yeah, those are probably the main things that I would have done. And you particularly realise, just what every uh, business leader realises, the importance of talent in the team. If you don't have the right people, it's very hard. Do you have to wait for your own idea before you start a business? I mean, that may take 10 years. Or can you just search around for one and become a business owner? Mm. I guess there are different approaches. Uh, 
the thing that I liked to what persuaded me that Verify was an opportunity is I saw um, big sim- similarities between uh, Fisher and Pike on healthcare's business model um, and the potential for this. So 90% or this year slightly less than 90% of Fisher and Pike on healthcare's uh, revenue is recurring. Sure. So you've got fantastic free cash flow, great gross margins. Mm-hmm. And when I saw uh, or thought or about the Verify technology, it's a similar opportunity but in a much uh, larger market. So medication delivery uh, in, its, in its various markets is like a $25 billion market um, and potentially disrupting big players. Nice. And that would be fun to do. Yeah. yeah, excellent, Greg. Thanks for coming in. Thank you, Nathan.